this first week of the new year, I have been working on the high tunnel. I've been taking my time with it. I'm not in a hurry. I just want to finish it before spring. Something that I forgot to do was put in these self-tapping screws to hold the ground post in place. And then I need a self-tapping screw to hold the arches in place. Years ago, I used to convert school buses into tiny homes. And one thing I've learned is knee pads. I know I never use them. I never use them. But when I worked on school buses, I definitely did. And working on this high tunnel made me realize that you need knee pads. Also, we've had some pretty good rains around here lately, and it's supposed to rain in a couple days. So hopefully I can get out here and work on this high tunnel before that happens and get to a good stopping point. All right, the first order of the new year is we need to do a hive inspection. That's what we're doing right now because we think something happened with our bees. We, we see some dead bees. All year the bees have been doing pretty good. Uh, I think we're pretty successful. So sad. You know, I think they're paralyzed. Because earlier that, earlier Jason found a, a wasp in here. It was a giant red paper wasp. We were out for a walk and we noticed that this was a quiet hive. So he looked in here and we killed the wasp. And these do look like they're kind of just paralyzed in place. So I, I believe that's what happened. We thought they were all dead on this one too, but there's some starting to come out. This is capped honey. I think we could just save this for ourselves. The bees are dead in their tracks. Like, look at that. I mean, it's the only thing I can think of is that wasp paralyzed all of them. See all that honey right there? All this beeswax, we can, we can eat the beeswax too. We were kind of wondering what to do because we see, I mean, there's no bees in here. Or there is some? There's not live bees. Live bees. Yeah, they're, they're all dead. Not one, there's not one bee in here that's alive like they're all frozen not frozen as in temperature like frozen as in motion like wherever they were see this like it's really sad i think that wasp because what i read from wasps uh especially paper wasps they will sting them and paralyze them and so i think that's what he did it's kind of sad because it's like equivalent to like say if you know, all 30 of our meat chickens died. Yeah. Like this whole colony of bees are done. Yeah. You can just set it. So we did not find the queen into this one. These are the ones that bees are dead. We're gonna look into this one, but we do see some bees coming out of it. Oh yeah, this looks a little more alive than um, this morning. Oh yay, they're alive. I wonder if I should have brought my smoker now. <laughs> it looks like they're dead, I know they're dead. And yeah, they're pouring out. Okay, I, they seem a little angry, so. Should I go get the smoker? I need the smoker. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I just... Box is loaded with honey. The top box? Yeah. Every single frame. I could barely lift it. So that's why I was waiting for you to come back. Um, I couldn't even really lift it. It was like, because you know how like, you know, some of the bee experts are like, oh, well, it's 50 pounds. You can't lift it if it's full of honey. Well, I lifted that one right now to see what the comparison and weight was. That's light. Really sad. These bees died. Those ones look really strong still. They're aggressive. They got honey down there. Uh, so, yeah. So this one, we're going to have to start brand new this year with a new set of bees coming this spring. Yeah, the bad news, we lost some bees. But the good news is that... We have honey, our first honey. That's amazing. Um, this isn't very much honey to harvest, but we could either save it for next spring's bees or just 
kind of carve into it and eat a little bit for ourselves, which I thought we would do so we can enjoy it. A lot of it is uncapped, so we probably won't be harvesting that. We're gonna save this comb for next year's, or actually it is this year, this spring's new bees. But if we can just pick out just a little bit here, it's not much, but hey, if it can get us like half a mason jar full, that would be great. We will definitely use the honey. And I'm not going through all the frames. Most of the frames actually just kind of look like that or they kind of look like that. So I, I probably would just leave it. And it's a lot of work because we don't have a honey extractor machine. Really, this is just us just trying to figure it out and learning how to even do bee stuff. I'm just going for these, aiming for these capped cells of honey here. So when I did the first frame yesterday and got this much honey, I felt like I was just making a giant mess and I felt like I was destroying the frame. But, um, so I texted my bee mentor, he said, that's fine, as long as you leave a lot of the comb or some of the comb behind um, the cells. So that way this ne next batch of um, spring bees, they can have something to kind of build off of and continue making more cells and then just encourage them to continue building out the frame because they can rebuild fairly quickly and it won't be a problem for them. The rest I'm just gonna scoop out with my spoon. It looks like candy. I know. And since we're going to be eating this right away, we're not going to be storing any of this because it's so little. Um, I'm not worried about some of the cells being uncapped. We'll, re we'll eat this pretty quickly. And then there's at the bottom here, I'm not sure if you can see it. See these dark cells? These are, this is a bee pollen mixed with a little bit of honey so it's turned into bee bread. We could eat that, but I'm going to leave it for for the next bees. So I'm just gonna aim for this little patch here. I, mean, I can see where this is gonna make a lot of mess. A lot of sticky mess. Yeah, that, well, that's how I felt with the first frame. I was like. Yeah. And then I had texted my bee mentor because I was like, now what do I do with this? You know, the frame, it's dripping with honey. It's not like I can go stick it outside. What do I do? So then uh, he said that we could um, wrap it in plastic wrap and then stick it in the freezer until we're ready for the next bees. And that gives the new bees a head start. Yes. Because it's not going to be completely clean. Yes. And that stuff, you just never hear people talking about that stuff. I know. <laughs> like every, all the research we've done, no one's ever mentioned what to do after you get honey. Like, what do you do with that? Yeah. yeah, we're ready to clean the whole thing out and wash and scrub the whole box, but I, know. I guess that's not what you're supposed to do. I know, I was like, how do I even clean this? Because this is so delicate here. So last time, when I, the other, yesterday when I did this, it kind of just sat here for a while and I was like, oh no, it's not going to strain. But I ended up having to crush it a little bit and then we got like a slow flow of honey. The only thing different I did this time is I put this on top so that way wax wouldn't ruin my sieve here. Yeah, it's like we need uh, special tools. Well, bees need their own separate, or honey, Yeah. they need their own separate tools because it's gonna to kind of get ruined. Yeah, our own harvesting tools, just like you would like butchering tools. So this side is done. So as you can see, I was in a panic yesterday like oh no i ruined it but it's not ruined because the bees can easily fix this especially if there's already comb drawn out they can just continue to rebuild this and they would love to eat this honey the leftover honey and freezing it will actually help because it will kill any of any beetles larvae or, or anything weird bugs. If you look on YouTube, it's like all the beekeepers, they're like, oh, well, just stick your frame into the honey extractor. <laughs> like, I don't have one. To help this flow a little bit faster, because our house isn't exactly hot in here, um, I put it over by our oven when I was making dinner, and it helped the, f the flow kind of go a little bit faster. I didn't heat it or anything like that. I just kind of warmed it a little. Yeah, maybe the cloth wasn't a good idea. I did the cloth on the between these two things yesterday and it seemed to work a lot better but I got wax on this and I'm 
I would just have to buy a new one. I mean, we're not in a hurry. It's just going to drip, yeah. slowly drip all out. I mean, it's just pretty exciting. It's just kind of like a little, little taste of what's possible with our bees. Yeah, it tastes good. So we have a lot of blackberries at our place. Oh yeah. I was what I was trying to see what flavor this was. I don't know. Clover. I, clover. I think it just tastes like clover. We to have me. a lot of clover. We have a lot of red clover. We're just trying to figure it out here, guys. Yeah. Newbie bee farmers. New bee keepers. newbie beekeepers. Right now, as far as animals, we have pigs and egg layers. It's a nice winter break when you just have these animals right now because in a couple months, we're gonna start getting meat chickens and we're gonna start doing it all over again. The next step is putting in some wind bracing. I have a playlist of this high tunnel build down in the show notes. So if you want to see all the videos, you can check them out. Also, I'm going to be doing one big full video of this build after I'm done. The front two are done. Now we need to do two more for the back. Now, the ridge pole. I connected it all together as per the directions, and then we're supposed to get the brackets, put it up in the middle, and then put the ridge pole, like slip the ridge pole from one end all the way to another, you know, while this is all screwed in together, one long piece. I've done this before, and I found that doing it one by one, piece by piece, instead of one long piece, is just a little bit more easier. Maybe if I had three people, and then three people probably could slip it all the way through with ladders all the way down and keep it one piece. But uh, my pigs are being pigs today, and they're being lazy, and they don't want to help me. So we have these brackets. These ones are made out of aluminum. This is what's, what's going to hold the ridge pole, and it's going to kind of go like that. You know, after Christmas, we finally reached winter here. Um, this is cold for our area, but it allows us to do stuff like this still. The, the ground's not completely frozen. Nowhere close to being frozen. It would not make sense for me to put these on first because they just slide off. The pole goes right through there, the middle there, and then you tighten these. On the ends, the end top piece, we're screwing in one of these with self-tapping screws. I marked every four feet from the end so that way I can know like that's four feet right there because 
this needs to be in the middle so that's gonna be off off a little bit so you just move it back and then you make this tight Four foot line is here, so that means I need to move this over. Let's hold that there and screw it in. The trick is when building a high tunnel is to not have any sharp edges on the outside all the way around screws the ends of the screws you don't want them sticking out here this needs to be smooth that was not as bad as i imagined and honestly that was pretty easy i would think that even if I had two or three people here, that that would be pretty difficult to do if that was one long piece. Leave a comment if you did that with your ridge pole on your high tunnel, if it's a long high tunnel, uh, leave a comment and let me know how you did that. Because doing it piece by piece like that is very doable. All the connections that we did, I need to throw a screw right into it on each one. All right, we made it, we made it to channel lock season uh, this is what's gonna hold the plastic after you put the wiggle wire inside this we're gonna have to bend this all the way on this arch so the easiest way to do that is to get a clamp if you're working by yourself you got to clamp it down so it's got to bend putting another channel lock on the bottom. We need to do that to each corner. So three corners left. Yeah guys, it's a kit, but it still work. It's not gonna be done for you, you gotta do it. I think we're at a good stopping point next we gotta do the channel lock that goes all the way down uh, it seems like I didn't do anything because it's just all those little little details little pieces of metal you got to put on before you put on the plastic uh, so not until we start putting on the plastic that it's gonna be a little bit more satisfying the first satisfying thing was putting up these poles here and then putting out the plastic so you know we're still chipping away at it slowly but surely we'll get it all done so usually what i've been trying to do uh with everything else you know editing these videos filming building this high tunnel fencing also kind of clearing out some spots maybe taking the last you know 30 minutes to an hour of the day and start clearing out some trees 
you know, I'm not taking out all the trees, of course, because when we start getting larger animals in here, that's one thing I did learn uh, of having our two steers is that, um, you know, we got to run an electrical line to keep them in. And a lot of these trees are in my way. Um, they don't need to be a huge cluster like this. You know, you want to keep some for shade. Uh, even if I just cleaned them up a little bit, so that way I'm not bushwhacking every time I have to move some animals. Also, we have a fence line there that I'm going to eventually get to. And clearing out some of these trees is going to help uh, as we continue moving forward. <laughs> 